The East Broad Top Railroad was founded in 1856, with construction beginning in 1872. Within a year, the first 11 miles of track between Mount Union and Rock Hill Furnace was completed. By 1874, the track was extended through the mountains to the town of Robertsdale, where rich, semi-bituminous coal was mined. Throughout the next 80 years, the railroad continued to be a lifeline to the citizens of Huntington County, Pennsylvania, not only hauling coal, but general goods, ganister stone, mail, and passengers. In the 1950s, with coal business dying out, the railroad filed for abandonment. On April 6, 1956, the last mainline train pulled into the yard at Rock Hill Furnace, and it seemed to be the end for the EBT. As if things couldn't get any worse, the entire railroad was soon sold to Nick Kowalczyk and his company, Kowalczyk Salvage, for scrap. However, rather than scrapping the railroad outright, Kowalczyk decided to leave everything as it was. Starting in 1960, the Kowalczyk family decided to operate the East Broad Top as a tourist railroad, and it remained in operation until 2011, when rising insurance costs and other factors forced the railroad to shut down again. But like a cat with nine lives, the EBT was given another chance. In February of 2020, a group of historic and modern railroading professionals established a nonprofit organization called the East Broadtop Foundation and bought the railroad from the Kowalczyk family. Almost immediately, their plan was put into action, and the railroad is on the road to rebirth once again. With the backstory complete, let's dive into the historical beauty of the renowned East Broadtop Railroad. Our tour begins at the freight office at the Rock Hill Furnace Yard. Here, the size difference between the EBT's three-foot narrow-gauge cars and a standard-gauge boxcar is on display. For many years, the Pennsylvania Railroad interchanged freight with the East Broad Top at their yards in Mount Union. It was a tedious process to transfer boxcar loads of freight by hand, but by the 1930s, a solution was found. A crane built in 1924 to transfer timber from narrow to standard gauge cars at Mount Union found a new purpose. It would now lift the standard gauge box cars off their trucks, and narrow gauge trucks would be put under them instead. All that was left was to add this device, an aluminum coupler adapter for the EBT's smaller couplers. In the yard are a bunch of hopper cars, made in-house by the railroad during the 19-teens and 1920s. Standing on some sidings adjacent to the shops are two new coaches, built by Hamilton Manufacturing in Washington State. The coaches are built of steel, with composite siding to replicate the look of the railroad's original wooden coaches. The original cars will still be used, but only for special events. Across from the roundhouse is this structure, which used to be an old farmhouse. It's the oldest building on the property, predating the railroad's existence. For many years, it was used as the master mechanic's office and is currently being stabilized for that purpose once again. The house itself was built in 1882 and improved upon until 1917. It currently has eight stalls for housing the railroad's six steam locomotives and two other pieces of equipment. We'll now go inside to see what treasures await us. Inside the roundhouse are several prized pieces of equipment. The first we'll look at is Motor Car M1. This gas electric rail car was built in 1927 by the EBT using parts supplied by the Brill Company of Philadelphia. Proving to be immediately successful, 
the car was used for passenger and mail service. With a seating capacity of only 12 people, the M1 usually pulled coach number 8, which we'll see later, as a trailer. Today the M1 is brought out for special occasions, such as the Fall Reunion and the Winter Spectacular. It's the only original 3-foot narrow-gauge motor car still operating in its original location. Parked in the adjacent stalls are four of the Railroad 6282 Mikados. The first is number 12, built by Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia in 1911. An instant hit with crews, it set the pattern for all future steam power on the East Broadtop. Restored to operation for tourist service in 1960, number 12 last operated in 2000. Next to number 12 are engines 18, 15, and 17. Number 15 was built in 1914, and along with sister number 14, was a logical step up from number 12. Number 15 was the last steam engine to operate for the EBT under the Kowalczyk family in December of 2011. Number 17 was built in 1918, and is one of three modernized Mikados, equipped with superheaters and southern valve gear. It had the honor of pulling the last mainline train in common carrier service on April 6, 1956. Number 17 last ran in 2001, before being sidelined with broken superheaters. Number 18 was the last of the EBT's Mikados, being built and delivered in 1920. It was run quite often in the final years of common carrier service, and broke down just before the end, leaving number 17 to close out operations. The East Broadtop Foundation plans to restore all six of the locomotives to operation, with 17 and 18 sister, number 16, being the first to return very soon. At the time of this production, a successful steam test was carried out in mid-June, and the jacketing was being applied to the boiler shortly after our visit. The current goal is to have number 16 operating before 2022 comes to a close. Throughout the yard, spare parts are abundant. A few wheels are lined up beside the shop building, waiting to be turned and put back onto rolling stock. Beside the main shop building is the foundry, where scrap metal and coke would be burned down to cast new parts. The main shop building is a time capsule into an era when the East Broadtop was able to repair its own locomotives and rolling stock on the premises. A pair of Babcock and Wilcox boilers powered a one-cylinder stationary steam engine, which drove an overhead belt shaft that powered all the necessary machines. The boilers also provided power to operate an electrical generator, which provided lighting for the shop, Orbisonia Station, and even a couple company houses. Some of the tools used for repairs in the shop included the wheel press, the locomotive wheel lathe, and an axle lathe. The shop crews were split into two shifts. The morning shift ran from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., and the evening shift ran from 3 to 11 p.m.
at the back of the shop are the final highlights of our tour. Coach number 8 was built in 1882 for the Boston Revere Beach and Lynn Railroad, and was bought secondhand by the EBT in 1916. Later equipped with roller bearing trucks, it was used as a trailer for motor car M1. It's currently stored in the shop awaiting truss rod repairs. Also stored in the shop is 282 number 14. This Mikado was built by Baldwin in 1912 and was a stalwart of tourist operations for many years. Currently the second in line for restoration, the driving wheels have been dropped from under the engine and sent to the Strasburg Railroad for rebuilding. The boiler has also been chalk marked for ultrasound testing to determine the scope of work required. The East Broadtop Foundation and the friends of the East Broadtop have made great strides in reviving this beautiful narrow gauge railroad in the last two years. I certainly enjoyed the immersive tour, and I highly recommend it for any photographer, rail fan, and history buff. You can find links to the Friends of the East Broadtop and the railroad itself at the end of this video and in the description. Until next time, this is Christopher Kovacs. Thank you very much for watching, and keep on steaming!